This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is August 10th, 2023. I'd like to start off thanking uh, the wonderful people who have contributed. Your donations have made this video possible and enabled me to engage in this ongoing research and provide my unique insights. Uh, I'm tremendously grateful to you. Thank you so much. Anyone who would like to contribute, you can do so. There will be links in the description below, as well as on my website, cjbbooks.com. I hope that everyone appreciates that uh, some very helpful, uh, very kind and generous people have contributed so that you can see this video free of charge. There are three stories which uh, dominate the Bible and create a plan for the extermination of mankind. And um, I think it's very important for people to understand that the story of the fall, the story of the flood, and the mythology of the apocalypse uh, weren't given to us by any gods. They were instead plans that were formulated by our enemies who uh, seek to exterminate us and remove us from the face of the earth. And a big part of this plan is to um, turn Christians into uh, self-hating people who oblige this plan themselves and to make uh, Muslims a force for the extermination of mankind and to pit these two forces of the behemoth and the Leviathan against one another so that humanity uses its knowledge of science and technology to kill itself off and leave the Israelites standing as the last human strain on earth. The uh, fall creates a myth that there were heavenly beings, fallen angels, who uh, came to earth and bred with human females to create two different seed lines of humanity. And one of these seed lines is proclaimed to be evil and the cause of man's expulsion from the Garden of Eden, from paradise. And also it is uh, taught that um, these evil beings uh, pollute the world and cause the need for there to be a cleansing, for paradise to be restored through the destruction of the earth and through the complete and absolute uh, extermination of the seed line of the fallen angels. Uh, the chief of those fallen angels was Samael, and uh, Samael uh, entered the Garden of Eden and seduced Eve, slept with Eve, and produced the child Cain. Cain's descendants included Tubal Cain, who introduced science and technology to the world. This was unripened fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is said to be a grapevine or a fig tree. And um, once this knowledge becomes ripened, the Israelites will be able to consume it to regain the immortality and androgyny of Adam and Eve. But until that time, the technology is unripe and it brings about death and destruction through weaponry, metallurgy, and uh, this war between this, these two uh, descendants of Eve, one through Adam, which is the uh, Shem Seth line, and the other through uh, Samael, which represents Ham, Japheth, and Cain. And I'm going to go through some of the uh, biblical verses and explain more about all this as I go along. The, the important thing to understand is that the story of the flood, the story of the fall, and the story of the apocalypse are all the same story told over and over again, and they repeat uh, these three thematic elements that uh, paradise becomes corrupted and needs to be cleansed, that there is a dual seed line, one from 
the fallen angels who were evil and bred with human beings and the other of the holy Israelites and that uh, all of this must culminate in a war in which um, the uh, Muslims and Christians battle it out as the Leviathan and the behemoth and consume one another with the knowledge given to them by the fallen angels. And they are also referred to as the ox of Christianity, who is Messiah, son of Joseph. He is called an ox in the um, Midrash. And the Messiah, son of Joseph, represents the donkey of Seth. And he is called a donkey in the Midrash. That'll be uh, one of the key elements of my next video, where I'm going to uh, explain all that. So let's have a look at um, the, uh, well, another thing I wanted to mention. This is all being promulgated as uh, UFO mythology today. The uh, fallen angels are reappearing as UFOs. Europeans are being set up to be stigmatized as the Edomites who bear this polluted, corrupt, evil blood of the evil other side. Uh, for example, the Freemason, Elijah Muhammad, tried to pit blacks against whites and called whites satanic, bearing the seed of Cain and bearing the seed of Samael, the fallen angel. Fallen angels, of course, are UFOs, ETs, extraterrestrials, aliens the chaos magician Alexander Dugan and Vladimir Putin are also setting about to pit Africans against whites and referring to whites as being satanic, as being the evil bloodline of the uh, Samael seed bearing, wicked, <laughs> unrighteous goyim who have to be purged from the earth in order for paradise to be cleansed as the Garden of Eden was cleansed. And another key element of that story is that this introduction of the evil blood of the fallen angels uh, destroyed the um, androgyny and immortality of Adam and Eve, and they were cursed with death. And they can only regain their immortality and androgyny uh, if the Edomites, the evil other side, uh, the UFO, the extraterrestrial seed-bearing um, Edomites are removed from the face of the earth as Adam and Eve were removed from the Garden of Paradise and as humanity was completely destroyed in the flood except for Noah and the flood failed to cleanse paradise and the new Garden of Eden of the new earth after the flood was once again corrupted because Noah bore within his DNA the evil DNA of Cain still that yet needs to be cleansed. So this final plan for the apocalypse, for the battle of Gog and Magog, um, for the return of Christ as the Antichrist as described in Matthew 24, is a plan to uh, remove non-Israelites from the face of the earth. That is the most important aspect of cleansing paradise, of chasing Adam and Eve out of the garden, of creating a flood which exterminated humanity except for one man and his family. They seek to replicate all of that by uh, darkening the earth, by waving their rainbow flag so that they are not held accountable for their sins, and by um, pitting Muslims and Christians or communists and the West against one another as the battle of the Leviathan and the behemoth to exterminate Europeans. Uh, this is being picked up by the mainstream media who are saying now that um, the uh, UFO revelations relate directly to Kabbalistic teachings uh, the UFO mythology and the UFO PSYOP is a cover for fulfilling Kabbalistic and biblical plans to exterminate uh, humanity 
all except for the Israelites. It will start with the extermination of the European Edomites who are being stigmatized around the world as if satanic, as if bearing the blood of the ETs. This uh, mythology of calling white satanic uh, is likely to morph into saying that the extraterrestrials have bred with whites, which is why whites excelled at creating the industrial age and implementing technology on earth. Uh, the advanced civilizations of whites will be portrayed as if they were given to whites through the intervention of aliens, extraterrestrials, and there will be a call for the other races to exterminate whites in order to eliminate the uh, dual seed line, the evil seed line of Cain from the face of the earth in order to cleanse the earth, restore it to its primitive state of the Garden of Eden, which will eventually only contain the um, Israelites. This is to begun, be begun by the return of Christ as the Antichrist, Messiah, son of Joseph, as the ox, who will betray all the Christians and set about to exterminate them, as was foretold in Matthew 24, uh, the book of Revelations, the Gospel of Judas, and the Apocalypse of Abraham. This article says, an ex-Air Force intelligent, intelligence official recently testified before Congress confirming the presence of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, with non-human entities, adding a new dimension of credibility to long-standing assertions of extraterrestrials. This is being married to Kabbalah. Notably, the testimony mirrors beliefs found within Kabbalah a centuries-old Jewish mystical tradition. So this is obviously a psyop fulfilling the plans of the Kabbalists and of the Biblicists. Uh, here's another article uh, claiming the Bible's explainer on UFOs. We're seeing how this uh, UFO psyop is being married to biblical um, uh, plans, which are mislabeled prophecies and how uh, Europeans are going to be, well, I believe Europeans are eventually going to be set up and whites are going to be stigmatized as the Nephilim who have uh, the dual seed line of these extraterrestrials and must be purged in order for paradise to be restored. Uh, this article goes on and refers to a book by Billy Graham. I'm going to talk about that in my next video. Jews and Christians will recall in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, that Elijah went up into heaven like a whirlwind aboard a chariot pulled by horses of fire. Was that a UAP, uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon? Are the many references to angels in the Bible old wives' tales? And Billy Graham in his book uh, talked about UFOs and how it applies to Christianity, we have Jacob's Ladder, the ascent of the angels up and down Jacob's Ladder. In Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10, there is reference to the Merkavah, the chariot. Um, we have Enoch ascending to paradise and becoming the archangel Metatron. Elijah ascending to paradise and becoming the archangel Sandalphon. So these uh, angels have been visiting the garden and introducing evil and knowledge, which has to be purged to cleanse the garden. It was purged by expelling Adam and Eve after Eve was seduced by the serpent, slept with him, and produced the child Cain. Uh, Genesis chapter th 3, verses 13 through 15 in the translation of the message says, The serpent seduced me, she said, and I ate. God told the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed. Cursed beyond all cattle and wild animals. Cursed to slink on your belly and eat dirt all your life. I'm declaring war between you and the woman. The woman, uh, again, is the male aspect of Adam. So we have Satan breeding with the female aspect of Adam to produce Cain. And then we have Adam uh, breeding with himself in the form, female form of Eve, to produce Abel and Seth. 
I'm declaring war between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He'll wound your head, you'll wound his heel. So the only resolution to cleanse paradise and allow for the restoration of Adam and Eve and their descendants to paradise is to kill off this other seed line, which is being portrayed specifically as the Europeans at this time, but ultimately will be all of humanity except for Israel. And only Israel will survive this serpent's curse and this war between the two seed lines. So the story of the fall, the story of the flood, and uh, the plan for the apocalypse is all part of this war between these two bloodlines to cleanse the Garden of Eden of evil. And this is why this UFO mythology is being introduced so that mankind wages war on itself in the name of fighting UFOs and so that uh, the non-Israelite forces arm up against one another viewing the, each other as if uh, descendants of these extraterrestrials who must be killed off in order to cleanse the garden. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 verses 21 to 24 states unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them they were initially uh, spirits uh, from the higher divine realm and they were given material flesh as coats of skins when they were purged from the garden of paradise and therefore the earth which is material has to be destroyed in order for adam and eve to regain that spiritual light state of being and uh, ascend to paradise and the lord god said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil notice that it's plural us the uh, male aspect of the Godhead Yahweh and the female aspect of the Godhead Shekinah, which are also uh, the male aspect of Satan Samael and the female aspect Lilith. And Kabbalah teaches that those are all one and the same being. To know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That flaming sword becomes Jesus Christ, who returns as the Antichrist to smite the Christians and keep them from entering paradise. That sword is Christ's cross, which points downward to the center of the earth, which is hell. So the cross of Christ drives Christians into hell and away from the Garden of Paradise. So that related, um, that related to the flood, which uh, introduces these concepts of self-hatred in Christians. Christians view themselves as being conceived in original sin, in evil. Uh, they view their salvation as their own extermination so that they can enter a mythical kingdom of heaven. And uh, they have been set up to fulfill this plan of cleansing paradise by exterminating the non-Israelites. That will be uh, the new flood, the new expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden is this war of the apocalypse and this deliberate destruction of the earth uh, through forest fires and all kinds of horrific things which change the climate of the earth and are setting us up to be destroyed. They're planning to darken the skies in their battle against the sun god Ra, the Seth Typhonians are setting up to create a cold, dark environment on the earth to fill the earth with demon-possessed uh, artificial intelligence in their view. Of course, demons don't really exist, but they are going to program them to serve the roles of Satan to be our tempters, accusers, prosecutors, and punishers. Well, they've already done it. So they are turning the earth into hell, uh, and all of this is very much like the story of the flood and the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden in order to cleanse paradise of us. They want to kill off this other bloodline which came about when uh, 
these supposed fallen angels came and bred with women. And uh, in the story of Enoch, it talks about how they taught mankind technology and the arts of civilization, and that civilization is somehow evil, and that's being turned into the idea that whites, Europeans, created civilization and therefore represent this race of giants who are evil, who are the descendants of Satan through Cain, and that whites have to be purged from the face of the earth in order for the primitive state of the Garden of Eden to be restored. Genesis chapter 6 uh, talks about this and in a very symbolic manner repeats the story of the fall. And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. The sons of God are the fallen angels like Samael who bred with Eve. Samael saw Eve as fair, and now we have the fallen angels seeing the daughters of men as fair. In other words, they want to have intercourse with them, seduce them, and produce uh, demigod children. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And these again are going to be portrayed as if uh, we of European descent are these evil beings who are the who have bred with the ets and gained their high technology and are satanic and must be destroyed in order for paradise to emerge and they took them wives all of which they chose and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh and remember that adam was given the clothing of flesh and became part of the material world Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Man, Adam was cursed with death when, he, um, when his female aspect uh, was seduced by the fallen angel, Samael. So uh, human beings' days are limited due to that sin, and human beings can only obtain immortality and regain androgyny if and when uh, all non-Israelites who bear that seed are exterminated. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So uh, there is once again a need for the expulsion of paradise and the curse of death to be imposed upon those who were bred from the fallen angels, meaning at first Europeans, and then to be expanded to all non-Israelites. Europeans first, because Europeans excel at technology, and uh, have the kingdom of Edom, the Melkut, the Melchus of Edom, which the Israelites think has usurped their power as the chosen of the evil god Seth Typhon, and therefore uh, they have to be removed from this exile of Edom. It will be done by the head of Edom, who is Messiah, son of Joseph, Christ returned, as the Antichrist and the ox will remove uh, the Israelites from the exile of Edom, which simply represents the continued existence, the very lives of Europeans must be extinguished so that they can get out of this exile. The exile ultimately has nothing to do with living in uh, Palestine. It has to do with the continued existence of the seed of Samael in the non-Israelites, and they can only remove themselves from that exile by exterminating the non-Israelites. And it repented the Lord <clears throat> that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Uh, other translations more correctly describe that as um, God regretted having made man and uh, wanted to destroy man because he so regretted the creation of humanity. 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the earth, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, the Talmud goes on to say that God uh, regretted having made the Chaldeans and the Ishmaelites who became the Muslims. And I'll talk about that in uh, my next presentation. Lewis Ginsburg uh, wrote about the Jewish legends surrounding Noah and the flood and what it actually meant in the oral tradition. So I'm going to go through uh, the relevant points that uh, Ginsburg touched upon, which relate to all this and tie together these three uh, epics, the mythological epic of the fall, the mythological epic of the flood, and the planned end times epic of the apocalypse, the battle of Gog and Magog in which they plan to kill us all off. And I really want to alert people how important it is to understand this and uh, to rescue ourselves from these people who are setting about to kill us all off. And I think we're at that point because they are now running this UFO PSYOP to condition us to perceive some human beings as being of this evil seed line who need to be exterminated. And they are setting up the technology to engage in a global apocalyptic war. So Ginsburg wrote, The punishment of the fallen angels Grown to manhood, Noah followed in the ways of his grandfather, Methuselah. While well, all other men of the time rose up against this pious king, so far from observing his precepts, they pursued the evil inclination of their hearts and perpetrated all sorts of abominable deeds. That indicates that they were children of Satan, children of Semael. Chiefly, the fallen angels and their giant posterity caused the depravity of mankind. The blood spilled by the giants cried unto heaven from the ground, and the four archangels accused the fallen angels and their sons before God, whereupon he gave the following orders to them. Uriel was sent to Noah to announce to him that the earth would be destroyed by a flood, that mirrors the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, and to teach him how to save his own life. Raphael was told to put the fallen angel Azazel into chains, cast him into a pit of sharp and pointed stones in the desert, Dudeo, and cover him with darkness. And so was he to remain until the great day of judgment, when he would be thrown into the fiery pit of hell, and the earth would be healed of the corruption he had contrived upon it. Azazel is Samael, he receives the scapegoat on Yom Kippur. Gabriel was charged to proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, the sons of the angels begotten with the daughters of men, and plunge them into deadly conflicts with one another that uh, later became the planned battle between Behemoth and Leviathan, Leviathan, the Christians, Behemoth, the uh, Muslims, and the Marxists. Shem Hazai's ilk were handed over to Michael, who first caused them to witness the death of their children in their bloody combat with each other. We're seeing that in Ukraine, where the Behemoth of Soviet Russia is pitted against the Leviathan of the West by design. These plans were expressed by uh, the uh, chaos magician Alexander Dugan in his book Foundations of Geopolitics and his subsequent book. And then he bound them and pinned them under the hills of the earth where they will remain for 70 generations until the day of judgment to be carried thence to the fiery pit of hell. That's what they have planned for us and that those are the plans that they're carrying out. 
to exterminate us, to cleanse the earth of our supposed evil in order to elevate themselves to the garden of paradise. And they are using the mythologies of Christianity and ufology to dupe our leaders and our people into doing this to ourselves. They're a very, very tiny uh, minority of a minority who want to fulfill these plans and kill us off. And uh, if we were to unite, if Christians and Muslims were to unite, we could easily save ourselves from this uh, plan to destroy us all off if Christians, Marxists, and uh, Muslims were to unite instead of obliging this script which they introduce to each of these peoples, which all produces the same ultimate results, which is our extermination, so that our enemies can obtain a paradise without us. When the angels came to earth and beheld daughters of men in all their grace and beauty, they could not restrain their passion. Shem Hazai saw a maiden named uh, Ishtahar, etc. So again, this is a repetition of the story of the seduction of Eve by Samael and Lilith, Satan. Shem Hazai is uh, another aspect of the uh, dark angels of Satan. Shem Hazai and Azazel, however, were not deterred from entering into alliances with the daughters of men, and to the first two sons were born. Azazel began to devise the finery and the ornaments by means of which women allure men. Thereupon God sent Metatron to tell Shem Hazai that he had resolved to destroy the world and bring on a deluge. So Azazel is giving the forbidden knowledge of the gods to mankind, and Metatron is utilizing that as a pretext to cleanse the world and bring on the flood and destroy the seed line of Azazel, which is now being portrayed as the Europeans. The Generation of the Deluge Well, the descendants of Cain resembled their father in his sinfulness and depravity. And again, that is being portrayed as the Edomites, the Romans, the Christians, the white Europeans. The descendants of Seth, who are the Israelites, led a pious, well-regulated life. And the difference between the conduct of the two stocks, the two seed lines, was reflected in their habitations. Unfortunately, at the time of Methuselah, following the death of Adam, the family of Seth became corrupted after the manner, manner of the Cainites. The two strains united with each other to execute all kinds of iniquitous deeds. This is the origin of the mythology of the mixed multitude, which reappears in the uh, Exodus mythology. The results of the marriages between them were the Nephilim, whose sins brought the deluge upon the world. In their arrogance, they claimed the same pedigree as the posterity of Seth. In other words, the Gentiles claim the same uh, line of descent as the Israelites, and they compared themselves with princes and men of noble descent. So they are stigmatizing uh, non-Israelites as if the evil descendants of Satan and themselves as the holy strain. And they are creating the mythology that paradise has been corrupted by this evil seed and that the only means that paradise can be restored is to destroy the earth and then allow only the seed line of Seth, which is them, uh, to remain and to breed uh, 600,000 immortal androgynes. The wantonness of this generation was in a measure due to the evil conditions under which mankind lived before the flood. They knew neither toil nor care, and as a consequence of their extraordinary prosperity, they grew insolent. It was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil given to them 
by these uh, supposed extraterrestrial beings which enabled them to uh, create the science and technology so that they did not need to toil or care in the fields anymore. In their arrogance, they rose up against God. A single sowing bore a harvest sufficient for the needs of 40 years. Think of uh, genetically modified organisms and GMO foods and corn, GMO corn, which is so vulnerable if it disappears, uh, will masses of people will starve to death and how they are trying to create meat from uh, cancer cells and uh, how they are trying to fulfill these uh, plans of creating these highly prolific food sources which don't bear the souls of the Holy One and are simply produced from the material world of Satan and which strip humanity of humanity's soul. And by means of magic art, they could compel the very sun and moon to stand ready to do their service. And they're trying to do that by uh, introducing particulates in the atmosphere to block out the sun. These are all very ancient plans, very ancient forms of alchemy to change the genetic structure of humanity through alchemy and to destroy the earth through alchemy. The raising of children gave them no trouble. They're also utilizing uh, alchemy to create homunculi in laboratories from the uh, skin cells of males converted to eggs and then the seed of males so that uh, males can breed by themselves in glass vessels and laboratories. They were born after a few days pregnancy and immediately after birth, they could walk and talk. They themselves aided the mother in severing the natal, navel string and the navel string becomes very important in Kabbalah as I discuss in my forthcoming books. But uh, pay attention to the fact that everything that is happening to us today was planned out thousands of years ago. And it is the same people who have been po imposing these plans on us through Christianity, through Islam, through Marxism. And they are now introducing this UFO mythology as a cover for their Kabbalistic beliefs to kill us all off. As a token that he would destroy the earth no more, God set his bow in the cloud. Even if men should be steeped in sin again, the bow proclaims, that's the rainbow, <clears throat> the bow uh, proclaims to them that their sins will cause no harm to the world. So when you see Kabbalists waving the rainbow flag, what they're doing is redeeming themselves through sin. They're Shabbatians, they're Zoharites, who um, wave this rainbow flag to demonstrate that they live in an antinomian world where they do the opposite of morality in order to cleanse the earth. Times, <clears throat> excuse me, times came in the course of the ages where men were pious enough not to have to live in dread of punishment. In such times, the bow, the rainbow, was not visible. So uh, they're waving that rainbow to show that the world is entirely sinful and is uh, above punishment. But what they're really doing is like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, they're egging on the destruction of the earth through their sin. This uh, really ties in um, the story of the flood to the story of the fall. The fall came about because of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was a grapevine, which bore the unripe uh, wine that Adam consumed and then was cursed to be expelled from paradise and was cursed to death. Noah lost his epithet, the pious, when he began to occupy himself with growing the vine. He became a man of the ground, in other words, material, like Adam being clothed in flesh. And this first attempt to produce wine at the same time produced the first to drink to excess. 
the first to utter curses upon his associates, and the first to introduce slavery. This is the way it all came about. Noah found the vine which Adam had taken with him from paradise when he was driven forth. He tasted the grapes upon it, and finding them palatable, he resolved to plant the vine and tend it. On the selfsame day on which he planted it, it bore fruit. He put it in the wine press, drew off the juice, drank it, became drunken, and was dishonored all on one day. He was dishonored by his son, Sam, who raped and castrated him. His work in the, his assistant in the work of cultivating the vine was Satan. It was Satan who planted the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden, which was a grapevine, who had happened along at the very moment when he was engaged in planting the slip he had found. Satan asked him, what is it thou art planting here? Noah, a vineyard, Satan. And what may be the qualities of what it produces? Noah, the fruit it bears is sweet, be it dry or moist, raisins or grapes. It yields wine that rejoiceth the heart of man. Satan, let us go into partnership in this business of planting a vineyard. Noah agreed. So this is a repetition of the story of the Garden of Eden. And Noah is playing the role of Adam and Satan has reappeared. He will later reappear in the form of Jesus Christ and offer up the same uh, gnosis, knowledge from the cross that the serpent offered from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So uh, Jesus is Satan hanging in the tree of knowledge, which reappears as the cross. Satan thereupon slaughtered a lamb, and then, in succession, a lion, a pig, and a monkey. The blood of each, as it was killed, he made to flow under the vine. Thus he conveyed to Noah what the qualities of wine are. Before man drinks it, he is innocent as a lamb. If he drinks of it moderately, he feels as strong as a lion. If he drinks more of it than he can bear, he resembles the pig, and if he drinks to the point of intoxication, he behaves like a monkey. He dances around, sings, talks obscenely, and knows not what he is doing. The uh, wine is chaotic. It introduces a chaotic state of mind into the intellect of mankind. This deterred Noah no more than did the example of Adam, whose fall had also been due to wine, for the forbidden fruit had been the grape with which he had made himself drunk. In his drunken condition, Noah betook himself to the tent of his wife. His son Ham saw him there, and he first told his brothers what he had noticed and said, the first man had but two sons, and one slew the other. This man Noah has three sons, yet he desires to beget a fourth besides. Nor did Ham rest satisfied with these disrespectful words against his father. He added to this sin of irreverence the still greater outrage of attempting to perform an operation upon his father designed to prevent procreation. He castrated him after uh, raping him. So you can see that the story of the flood is a repetition of the story of the fall, and it establishes uh, two seed lines. The seed line of the evil side is represented by Japheth, and Ham, and the seed of Seth, of uh, pure Adam breeding with Eve, is represented by Shem, the Israelites. Uh, Ham is cursed, supposedly, with the dark skin of the African races, and is cursed to be the slave of slaves, that slave being Japheth, who uh, represents the Europeans. 
and the Edomites who are now slated to be exterminated. The whole world is being pitted against white people. White people are being falsely portrayed as if the descendants of Satan who must be exterminated in order for paradise to be restored. Uh, the burden of creating technology is being laid upon the shoulders of the whites. Technology is being portrayed as evil, that corrupted paradise. Paradise has to be restored to its original state through the cleansing of the earth of both the whites and their technology. People are being encouraged to become like the Amish and give up technology, become technophobes, and to hate white people and to seek their extermination. We see the South Africans openly chanting, kill the boar, kill the farmer, meaning exterminate the whites. Uh, the Freemason Elijah Muhammad, who was presented himself as a Muslim, declared that the whites are the seed of Satan and must be exterminated. Chaos magician Alexander Dugan is inciting Chinese, Africans, and other Marxists against white people to exterminate them. Uh, the man who chanted kill the boar also said that he is Putin and uh, Putin is him. So this is all being set up to create worldwide hatred of white people and exterminate white people on the pretext that this will uh, cleanse the earth as the flood did and uh, cleanse paradise as the expulsion of Adam and Eve did. So white people are going to be expelled from existence if this plan is carried out. We should instead be embracing all of humanity, eliminate this Christian conception of the fall and that we are born in original sin, eliminate this Muslim desire to wipe out the kafir and uh, end this uh, script, this play, this three-act play which was written thousands of years ago which is setting up to cause humanity to exterminate itself and destroy the earth in the name of cleansing the earth of evil so that paradise can be restored. And Jesus, the ox, the Messiah son of Joseph, the reincarnation of Cain and Esau, the uh, soul of Satan, uh, described the destruction of the world when he will return as an extraterrestrial alien to exterminate humanity, when the Christ will return as the Antichrist to kill us all off, which I explain in my forthcoming book, volume four of my satanic series, of my satanic Secrets of Jesus Christ series, Final Judgment, and I explain all this very thoroughly, but the Christ will return as the Antichrist to exterminate humanity. Matthew chapter 24 verses 30 to 41 states, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. They're going to mourn when Jesus comes because the Christ returns as the Antichrist to kill us all. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. That is uh, the 144,000 uh, Israelite virgins described in um, Revelations. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. The fig tree is also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. The fruit of uh, the knowledge of good and evil is ripening to be utilized as the Israelites and to be utilized by mankind to exterminate itself. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation certainly will not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The authors of this anticipated that the Iron Age would culminate uh, at the time of Christ and that all these things would occur, but they didn't. And just as uh, that uh, plan was not fulfilled, we can head off their plans to kill us off today. Uh, all through the centuries, they've been saying that it's the end of times and they've been trying to convince humanity to destroy itself. And they're doing it today and we can thwart it just as our ancestors thwarted it. 
But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. See how all of this is married to the uh, story of the flood, which is then married to the story of the fall. This is all a plan to exterminate us and to view ourselves as if we're evil so that we welcome our suicidal extermination as if it were our salvation, which will leave only the Israelites on the face of the earth. And that is the same plan that is spelled out by Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Marxism. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, drinking of the vine, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, marrying and giving in marriage, the curse on Adam and Eve to bear children instead of being immortal. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Christians are insanely welcoming the second coming of Christ. He will come as the Antichrist to exterminate all of them. They have to be made aware that they are being set up to suicidally annihilate themselves and the rest of non-Israelite humanity. And if we can wake Christians up to that, we can thwart their plans. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill, one will be taken and the other left. This becomes the mythology of the alien abduction, uh, which was first portrayed as the mythology of the rapture. And all of this is being sold to us as uh, this BS PSYOP of UFOs, which our own government, our own government is perpetrating against us. And that should, um, that should definitely alert people to the danger that we are in. Our own government in America is fulfilling these plans of the fall, the flood, and the coming apocalypse. And there is going to be no one to save us but ourselves. We have to face these cold hard facts. We have to organize politically to get people in government who will tell us the truth, people who will instigate investigations as to who is behind all of this. We need congressional hearings in which my work can be presented to demonstrate these plans, how they are fulfilling these plans, how they call them prophecies, but uh, they themselves fulfill them. They were not created by gods. They were created by a specific tribe which is setting about to exterminate us. I would again, from the bottom of my heart, like to thank the uh, wonderful people who have contributed to make this video possible. I do need your ongoing contributions to keep doing this. I'm the only person in the world capable of doing this. Uh, I face tremendous obstacles. Uh, vicious smear campaigns against me by people who plagiarize my work and uh, uh, terrible <laughs> shadow banning and censorship uh, blacklisted throughout mainstream and alternative media and uh, I'm so deeply grateful to the people who helped me to keep going and again I do need your ongoing contributions and uh, please look forward to my next video where I'm going to be talking about the uh, ox and the donkey, and the galut, and the melkut, and uh, the kingdoms, and uh, the exile, and this plan uh, to have Messiah, son of Joseph, lead the Edomites into self-destruction, to remove the Israelites from the galut, the uh, exile in Edom, of Rome, of America, of Christendom, followed by the galut, well, it's not really officially a galut because they don't consider Islam a real religion. The Kabbalists believe that the Muslims worship nothing and that their neshama, their soul, is uh, 
different from the rest of humanity and represents that of a wild animal, the donkey. But their Messiah, son of David, is the donkey who will rescue them from the donkey of the Muslims. So uh, Muslims who think that uh, paradise is to be yours have been as viciously duped as the Christians. You are simply an instrument of the destruction of Edom. And after you have performed that service for your masters, your masters plan to exterminate you as well. And uh, they will have a vastly great advantage over you because they are encouraging you to uh, abandon the pursuit of high technology, which they themselves will be the masters of, and then they will utilize starvation and biological warfare to exterminate you. Uh, Israel has been shown to be producing and developing biological weapons which target Arabs. I'm sure they have them to target other people, and uh, if they succeed in their plans, they're going to kill you off too. And their greatest fear is, as it states in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10, I think, uh, not to allow the ox and the donkey to plow together. In other words, not to allow Edom and Ishmael, Esau and Ishmael, uh, the Christians and the Muslims to unite, the ox of Christianity and the donkey of uh, Islam to ever unite, because if they do, we can easily defeat that minority of the minority who is pitting us against one another perpetually so that we kill each other off and leave them standing as soul heirs of the world to come. So we have to look away from uh, Messiah, son of Joseph, Jesus Christ, who wants us to kill ourselves off and wants to lead the Israelites out of the exile in Edom. And we have to look away from Muhammad, Messiah, son of David, the donkey, who wants to uh, lead Muslims to kill off the Christians and then kill off themselves and remove uh, the Israelites from the Galut, the exile in Islam, which is to come. And the exile has nothing to do with the land of Palestine. It is instead the existence of human beings who are non-Israelites and the only way for them to remove themselves from that exile is to exterminate us all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in that video <laughs> if I can garner sufficient contributions to keep going. But I, I'm very grateful to those of you who have given to me and given to me generously. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope everyone appreciates it. This would not have been possible without them. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.